What's going on, everybody? I hope everyone is doing well. And I got to be honest with you, when the Celtics beat the Heat, my day is just a thousand times better. It's just the truth. You know, I respect the Heat, but I just dislike the team so much. So tonight was a great night. Celtics come out on top 143 to 110, just a monster win on the road. And yes, you heard that right. Another game where the Celtics were able to get up and over that 140 point mark. They've done that five times this season. Compare that to last year's team, a team who held that number one offense of rating spot for some of the year you know they only cracked that 140 point mark one time and on top of that in the past 21 games in nine of those games at one point the celtics have had a 30 point lead and of course it has a lot to do with their defense and their defensive personnel but on offense this team is just a well-oiled machine and i think the sweetest part about all this tonight was this was the heat's fifth straight loss before tonight the heat hadn't lost five straight games in about three years which i thought was a pretty impressive stat to be honest with you but the celtics were able to make it it happened tonight and if anybody was wondering the Celtics haven't lost five straight games since 2014 so you know I think some people might just throw this win into the Celtics shot the lights out category which is true they were 87% at the rim 62% from the mid-range and 55% from three and some nights a team might just be able to walk into a game like that just kind of out of luck they're just scorching hot but I thought the Celtics offensive approach tonight made it happen I thought Tatum and Brown did a good job of setting the tone another great game for them just kind of willing their way to the rim another game for Tatum where he shot 10 free throws. Tatum did a good job early there attacking mismatches. They had Haywood Highsmith on him who I guess is supposed to be his his primary defender but I think the Heat are going to realize and the rest of the league is realizing you can't guard Tatum with smaller guys anymore. He got Highsmith into some early foul trouble there. Highsmith just simply isn't bulky enough to guard Tatum. Tatum just used his weight to get to the basket and then when he had Hero and Robinson on him just simply turned around shot right over them. You know this is a different Jason Tatum. His skill set is more refined that mid post work again that weight that he's put on he's a mismatch no matter who you put on him nowadays and speaking of mismatches the guy who will be the x factor in the potential playoff series between these two teams is Kristaps Porzingis I mean at this point I think it's safe to say that Porzingis has really surpassed any expectations that any Celtics fan or even NBA fan had for him and how impactful he would be on this team this guy scores every time he gets the ball he's up to 1.4 points per post up gets fouled on 30 percent of his post up is automatic from the mid range and is a sniper from behind the arc and all of that was on display in the first quarter alone we saw him post people up we saw him take advantage of Jimmy Butler in the mid-range step out for pick and pop threes I mean he was unguardable KP really creates some serious mismatch problems for the Miami Heat and what I love the most is the Heat can't run that zone on us anymore because what you do is you take Porzingis you put him at the nail you put him at the elbow he just turns and shoots he's automatic from that spot he's run the 90th percentile for all mid-range jumpers that zone for whatever reason that used to break the Celtics brain is truly a thing of the past now like I said you put KP there he's gonna do his thing and even JT too good of a shot maker too good of a playmaker you put him there they'll just shred the zone apart but you know a lot of the success that comes with KP obviously depends on if he is on the floor and we saw you know something pop up tonight with that little ankle sprain he was doubtful to return but ended up coming back on the bench no ice pack no nothing so maybe it's nothing to worry about going forward to be honest though when it comes to Porzingis's health I think it's went as expected you know the Celtics are 45 games into the season now he's played 32 or 33 so he's on track to hit the 60 mark and that's really all I want to give us good 60 regular season games and try to be as healthy as possible for the playoffs let's talk about the other new addition that makes this matchup way different than years previous Drew Holiday Drew had a rock solid game tonight on both ends of the floor finished with 17 points five assists five rebounds and this might be his best scoring stretch with the Celtics and for the last five games he's had 17 or more points and tonight just insane shooting split shooting 87% from the field and 75% from three there was a play tonight or just a simple shot that went under the radar a bit but it really showed Drew's poise and what he brings to this team to end the first half and to start the third quarter the Heat had made a little bit of a run they cut the lead to within 10 and it was one of those moments where you felt the momentum start to shift in the Heat's direction but Drew got the ball with about 11 minutes to go there in the third quarter and hit a simple corner three and that put it all to rest there from there the Celtics blew it open it was in that moment though that I really recognized his poise and what his presence does for this team because when he got the ball and he shot it there was no doubt in my mind in what was going to happen I knew that shot was going in and in years previous with previous players you just you just never know you didn't really feel too confident they were too hit or miss that's really one of the main takeaways from the players sent out and the acquisitions of Drew and Kristaps yes 
KP might not bring his health consistently. But you know when KP is out there, when Drew is out there, and he always is, they're going to give you close to all-star level production. And that's every single night, no question. And it's no knock on Marcus Smart or Rob Williams. Those are two of my favorite Celtics players of all time, but they were just too inconsistent. And it's at that point in the episode, we're going to do the quick hits. And we have to start with none other than Luke Cornett. And I'm done talking about trading Cornett or looking for another third big because he has proved to be perfectly fine. Finished with 12 points, five rebounds and assists tonight. And that assist was one of the best passes I've ever seen Luke make, right? The little high, low action between him and Al Horford. In that third quarter there, it was really Luke time. It was the green cornet. It was lemon square Luke. He had four dunks, three of them being alley-oops. His hands continue to impress me. And you know what also impresses me is that we're seeing more minutes with him and Al on the floor at the same time together. And that point differential really starting to creep up there. So shout out to Luke playing his role and playing it extremely well. Let's move on to JB. Like there's, there can't be enough good words about Jalen Brown's season finished with 18 points, three steals, five assists, four rebounds, seven for 11 from the field, 50% from three. What I love about his improved game is something that we've talked on here a bunch about. He's returned to like third season Jalen Brown defense. He's locked in on that end of the ball, taking pretty much the toughest assignment every single night. And also on the offensive end, his pick and roll offense has really improved. He's the second best pick and roll player on this team behind Derek White. And to me, that means a lot. How many times have you logged on to Twitter or listened to your favorite Celtics talk show and heard them talk about Jalen Brown's decision making? Well, this year, second best pick and roll player on the team. In that third quarter that Luke had wouldn't have happened without JB. JB connected with him multiple times there to make his life easier. Let's wind it down there. The Celtics win big 143 to 110 on the road against the Miami Heat. They are now 35 in 10 on the season. Good all around performance from the starters and the bench too. They deserve more credit because there was questions around them this year as well but anyways guys i'm gonna wrap it up right there if you enjoyed this video please like comment subscribe it's the best and easiest way to support i'm here after every single Celtics game all 82 plus the playoffs i'm not going anywhere i will talk to you guys saturday january 27th la clippers peace